Hi guys! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I was gone for over a year but I'm finally back and as you can probably tell by the title of this video we are here today to talk about Minerva University. And honestly, it feels so weird to say that because when I started my YouTube channel back in 2022, I was still a sophomore in high school and I was about to leave for one year long program in the United States as an exchange student. And you know, I was just so excited about moving alone, literally across the ocean at 16. And right now I'm just 18 years old and I'm moving to the United States again, which Wow, like how did we get here? <laughs> so yeah, I'm here today to talk about Minerva, maybe a couple of things about myself first because probably a lot of you don't know me yet. So my name is Emilia, I'm Polish, I was born in Poland and raised here, uh, but my YouTube channel is mostly in English because, you know, I do have a lot of international friends that I gained during my exchange year, so it's kind of like natural for me. Yeah, as I said, I'm 18 years old, I just graduated high school and I'm leaving to college in 40 days, which like, I'm a little bit terrified, not gonna lie. Uh, so yeah, let's get started with the video today. I also added um, like different sections. So we will talk about, you know, studying, we'll talk about traveling part, you know, traveling to seven countries, all of it. We will talk about money, finances. We will talk about your questions. So we will have a Q&A section at the very end. Uh, and yeah, if you like this video, you can also follow me on Instagram right here. I will also try to answer all of you guys' DMs, so you can just text me if you have any questions. Uh, and yeah, let's get started! Okay, and I just want to add two or even three disclaimers at the beginning. So the first one is that I'm not a Minerva official, I'm not anyone that's working for Minerva right now, uh, so I'm just kind of like recording from my experience, you know, my personal opinions about things, but I will link all of the resources down below, so I'll link the Minerva's website and all of the other things that you may potentially need. Obviously, remember to always do your research if you're still curious about some things after this video, just check down the resources. Uh, yeah, the second disclaimer is is that again I did not start it on Minerva like this is a video pre Minerva so some of my opinions or views on things may change throughout the years I will probably like update this video in a couple of years but you know right now I'm just kind of like going with the flow uh, trying to express my feelings and maybe uh, help some of you who need some guidance regarding choosing your college maybe after this video will be like wow yeah this is definitely something for me or maybe you'll be just like okay no, Minerva, like, this is a no-go. Whatever you will decide, uh, I'm here for you, I'm here to answer your questions, and yeah. Okay, so what Minerva University is explained in simple terms. So I have the five most important things that you need to know at the beginning. First one, Minerva is an American university. Because you travel so much, some people assume that it is some kind of international school, but no, it is an American university, so you graduate with a bachelor's in the United States. The second thing that you need to know about Minerva, it is not an online school. All of the classes are online, but it is not an online school because we all live together, we have kind of like a campus. Uh, uh, in order to complete the full program that I'm doing, the classical like bachelor's program, you need to be present on Minerva at all times. So it is not really an online school, although you study online, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. Third thing is that a traditional degree on Minerva is four years. So just like any degree in the United States, any bachelor's degree, it will take four years. The difference is that the first year is a preparation year. So you kind of like study your major for three years, but the first year we all study the exact same things. And I will talk about the preparation year a little bit later when talking about studying. And the fourth thing that you need to know about Minerva, that it is very international. And by very international, I mean that less than 10% of students are American and like 90% of us come from a different country and our first language is not English. And the last thing that I wanted to add at the very beginning is that Minerva is a fairly new college. So it's been going for about 10 years uh, but there are classes that already graduated from Minerva. <laughs> so for people thinking that this is some kind of scam or anything, 
no, not really. There's a lot of people that graduated and are very happy about their experience. There are also some people that graduated and didn't really like their experience that much. Uh, so yeah, we'll today talk both about pros and cons of Minerva, uh, but those are just the most basic things that you need to know. And now let's move on to the part about how I learned about Minerva and why Minerva was my personal favorite. Okay, my story how I learned about Minerva. So I was an exchange student in Arizona in the United States and we all have someone that's called a local coordinator. So they are a person that's supposed to like guide you for problems, help you, all of this. My amazing local coordinator uh, was Jennifer and Jennifer actually helped me so much to like find the right place for me. So we talked a lot about colleges and she kind of like casually mentioned Minerva in one conversation. And it just got very, very stuck in my head. I was like, okay, this is something new. Like this is something I have never heard about. So then I did a lot of research and it just went immediately as a first place on my college list. I was like, this is my plan A. But then I came back to Poland and things changed a lot. Like I needed to still do my senior year. I was very stressed about my exams. I was doing a lot of other things like working, volunteering, trying to just make my life work again. Uh, and I decided not to go to college. Actually, I decided to take a gap year and, and then I did apply to Minerva which still to this day, I don't really know why I did it. I just felt a need to do it, you know? I just felt like Minerva is the right place for me. And I didn't really thought that I would get in first try. I thought that I will maybe get in next year. I was pretty confident that at some point I will get into Minerva because I felt like this is really a great fit for me, but I would never, never tell that it will be this year. So basically what happened, I got in. And right now I'm not taking a gap year. Maybe I will do this adventure after Minerva but for now I'm just going straight to college in 40 days again which wow like what and yeah I did apply it uh, so when it comes to applying now let's talk about the application process I have a couple of things written about the application process because it can get confusing so let's just you know just stay with me Okay, so the first thing is that you don't need any standardized testing. No ACD, no SAT, no English tests, nothing like that. The only things you need are six biggest accomplishments, that's six, six biggest accomplishments and to complete six challenges. Okay, that sounds very mysterious. <laughs> Basically, the six challenges are kind of like a set of tests that is supposed to test your creative thinking, like your logical skills, how well you're able to adapt to different situations. Um, it is basically like tests to see if you'll be a great student on Minerva, like if you'll be able to succeed in academics and in the community. And then you have the six biggest achievements. So the achievements don't really need to be academic. Um, I would even say that Minerva kind of encourages you to have different achievements in different fields. So I decided not to share my achievements. And the thing is, um, no one really knows, you know, what are the criteria, kind of a similar thing like for Flex, I talked about the Flex application process a while ago. Basically, you just need to show your ability to succeed on Minerva and also you need to prove your academic excellence. So you will still submit your grades, you will submit some documents from school, uh, but it's mostly about those achievements. So some of my achievements, and I won't talk about the achievements specifically, but just uh, about the fields that they were in. So I had, I believe, one achievement in sports, then two or three, I think, three achievements um, regarding like volunteering work and my projects, my personal things. Then I had one achievement regarding my exchange program. And honestly, I don't remember in which category was the last one. So as kind of you can see, like, um, you can make the achievements from very diverse fields. So you can talk a little bit about school, uh, a little bit about things you do after school, maybe things you do, I don't know, in church, in your family, your personal hobbies. It can be truly anything that you're very proud of and you want to like show to, you know, uh, people who will check your applications. Uh, so yeah, and right now let's talk about why application process is so competitive. Like why everyone says that only 2% of people who apply get in, which is crazy. So Minerva has a very low acceptance rate, at least according to all of the data available online. And you shouldn't be discouraged by that. 
like a lot of good schools are competitive but you still can get into them like you know and i would say that the main thing on minerva is that again it's very diverse so people from a lot of countries apply i mean like a lot i think on minerva we have people from more than 80 countries so obviously you don't compete only with people from your nation you also compete with a lot of other people and in my class on minerva there is 220 people i don't know how many it will be in future classes but as you can see this is not really that a lot of people but the important thing is that Minerva says that they don't have like a set number of people that will get in each year um they actually said that they're now trying to kind of like expand so there's a high possibility that next classes will be bigger than our class but they say that they will take anyone that really fits into their college so this is a very interesting concept and also the Minerva application process was designed to make it it as unbiased as possible. So according to Minerva, basically all of these standardized testing like ACD, SAT, English tests are usually based, you know, the scores of kids may be based on their family situation, like financial situation, if they went to a private school or public school. So they really wanted to make everyone's chances equal, especially because like 90% of us are international students. And I would truly recommend trying the application process. I feel like this is a great exercise to like think about your achievements, to complete this challenge, um, they're not very long. I think each one takes about an hour or even less to complete. So, um, and some of them are very fun. Like you, you wouldn't expect how fun like tests can get. But yeah, and my general just advice, like don't be too stressed about it. Don't pressure yourself too much. Uh, it's not like you need to like score a certain number. You just complete the test. You write about the achievements. Then you send your application and it's good to go. And uh, sometimes people get interviews to Minerva. I also got an interview. I believe even my parents were present on this interview. But it was kind of like a talk with a Minerva official. And they were just talking to me and my parents. Then I also could ask some questions. So it wasn't really a typical interview, more of like a talk. And I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, so yeah, if you have some more questions about the application process, leave them down below or text me on Instagram. But right now we need to move on to the part about traveling because I feel like this is something that people are very excited about. Okay, traveling! So most of you probably know that during Minerva you travel to seven different countries. And not only travel, you also study and live in all of those seven countries. So the first country is obviously the United States and you stay there for a full year. Again, it is a preparation year for you know, what will happen in the next few years. And it is kind of supposed to give you all of the needed skills to succeed on Minerva. So the preparation year um, is probably the hardest year on Minerva, honestly. We all study the exact same things. So for example, right now during summer, I'm doing a lot of programming and math because I haven't really done a lot of it in high school and I need to catch up to everyone. And uh, we also study writing during summer and then during the school year, uh, we will just have the exact same classes and we will all try to succeed in the same fields before we will choose our major. And in my opinion, this is a genius idea. Um, people have honestly different views on the preparation year. I will tell you more in a year, so you need to wait. <laughs> but anyway, um, and what happens next? So then you go to six different countries and each country you spend one semester. You live in college dorms with all of the other students. So in San Francisco, we live in one or two buildings. I think our class will live in two buildings. Uh, we have roommates, you know, we get a shared kitchen, all of the traditional college experience. Obviously, it is a little bit different because we don't have sports, you know, we don't have a library. But Minerva works with a lot of different companies, a lot of different like places, and they help us to like set up the whole campus in the city. So this is what Minerva truly believes in, that the whole city is our campus. We do a lot of projects outside the residential hall. We can go out during weekends. We usually have three days free during the week. Uh, that was a very weird sentence, but basically, uh, our Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays are usually free. We also have like little field trips and other things like that. Uh, but yeah, it is very different from a traditional college experience. And we also live together. The accommodation also varies 
like country to country in some places like in Buenos Aires the Minerva's housing is literally like a penthouse and you can like see the whole city through the windows and then in other countries it looks very traditional quality you know like just bunk beds and all of it uh so I just think it is very interesting uh you definitely get to experience a lot the traveling part is that you know, it is what a lot of people are excited about, uh, including me. And now let's talk a little bit about logistics, like how the traveling even works. So we go to six different countries and those are India, Taiwan, uh, Argentina, Germany, England, San Francisco, I mean, United States and South Korea. And in all of these countries, we live in very big cities. Not always the capital city, but just a very big city in general. And basically, as I mentioned, we all live together. So we need to cook for ourselves. We need to do our own laundry and all of it. But the housing is already in the tuition price. And the important things are also the visas and the health insurance. So we all cover the costs of our visas, flights, and the health insurance. This is something that I get asked, you know, very often about. And the visa process will truly be different for every country. For example, for me, it was very easy to get an American visa, but that is because first, I'm Polish and I'm European. Second off, I already went to the United States. I, it depends what kind of passport you have. Uh, it may be harder to get a visa to some countries. And also about the traveling, obviously, flights, um, the cost of flights really, really adds up pretty quickly. But a lot of students get like great discounts, like great deals. We have like different little websites where we look for cheap flights. Uh, so basically, as you can see, the traveling part is kind of like a selling point of Minerva. Truly the experience of like, you know, literally learning about seven different cultures at the age of 18 or like 19 or 20, I think this is something that's life changing. Like I can see that as a, such an immersive experience and I haven't visited most of the countries that we'll be flying to. So I'm so, so excited. And obviously I will vlog in every single country. I will try to share the culture, the food, music, everything that will be going on. Uh, and yeah, I hope this is enough about traveling. And right now let's talk about the studying process and later on we'll move to the Q&A and we'll wrap up this video. I know it gets pretty long, but there's a lot of things to talk about. Okay, studying. So the most important part of college, at least it is supposed to be the most important part when you choose your college. Um, okay, so on Minerva, you study on a special platform called Forum. And as I mentioned at the beginning, it is fully online. And what is confusing for people, some people think that this is kind of like, you know, Zoom classes or like Teams classes, which I don't really think it is. So I attended a couple of classes on Minerva, but those are like summer study groups. So those are not run by the professors yet. They're just run by all their peers on Minerva, by all their students. And this is their work study. Um, uh, yeah. And you study on forum. So I really like forum, but I know a lot of people have a hard time adjusting to it. Basically, all of the classes are like hour to hour and a half long. There's always less than 20 people in your class, but usually in the summer groups, there's like less than 10 or 15 people. So it's very fun. Like you get to talk with everyone and the classes are very engaging. It's not like you can just do like play Minecraft in the background. You know what I mean? First thing, you need to have your camera turn on at all times. Second thing, we only have push to talk. So we cannot unmute your microphone by accident, which like, wow, this is a blessing, truly. Uh, you just need to like press control to speak. The classes are so fun. Like we have a lot of different polls, different quizzes, different projects together, like little groups inside the study group, uh, like breakup rooms where we just work on some things. And for me, the classes are not stressful, but they definitely like keep me like very present in the moment. Like I can stay very, very focused during a Minerva class. And I obviously don't know if that will change during the normal semester, but for now, I'm very happy about forum. And yeah, you, you can see it for yourself. Minerva organizes these different events throughout the year where you can attend like a forum class just to see how the platform works and how it's very different from like Teams or Zoom. It has truly like so many tools built in that I'm still trying to like learn how everything works, but it's great. And also about studying. So on Minerva, we don't have finals. We don't have tests. We work on assignments. 
And the thing is, some people, you know, assume that because we don't have tests, you don't really need to study that much or the workload doesn't get hard. But from what I heard from older people on Minerva, truly the assignments are big like it's not like just sending a quick homework it's usually just like a whole essay like or like 20 pages of research or something like that which personally for me i really like it i prefer to work on assignments throughout the year than having one big test that i'll be very stressed about and i won't sleep for like two weeks trying to study for it it is definitely a different system also the fact that you choose your major after the first year a lot of people ask me about my chosen major i don't know yet like this is something that i really need to further explore i have some personal favorites but you know we'll see how it goes i don't want to say anything for now and i just feel like studying on minerva is definitely very unique experience you need to have a lot of self-discipline you need to do a lot of reading before and after class a lot of work you just do by yourself so in san francisco we will probably have only two classes per day which doesn't you know some people are concerned that you will like sit 10 hours in front of a screen you definitely need to study a lot because all of the study materials are also like online but the actual classes I think they're about like two to three hours a day so it's not like you sit whole day in front of the computer and again it's only for four days a week so the other three days are just you know to study on your own to travel to have fun to explore your community so definitely the Minerva system is not for everyone this is something that I emphasized a lot in this video but that's probably why the Minerva classes are also so small um, it needs to be just a great fit for you and so yeah if you have any more questions about studying on Minerva let me know down in the comments I will also link some other good videos specifically about studying on Minerva and now let's move on let's just sit and sit <laughs> oh my um it's so hot today in Poland you just cannot imagine how hot it is it is very hot. I would say in Fahrenheit, but I don't know. But in Celsius, it's like 33 Celsius. That is a lot. Um, anyway, yeah, now let's move on to the finances part and then we'll do the Q&A section. Yeah, let's talk money. And this is always a hard topic because the education in the United States is very expensive. For international students, you all probably know how expensive colleges in the United States are. And same goes honestly for American people. And I won't just share all of my thoughts and, you know, everything that I have to say about it. It is a very broad topic. I think maybe it's like for another long video or even like a podcast. But now let's talk about the financial aid on Minerva. So Minerva is need-based. It is not merit-based. Need-based means that the whole financial aid package will be based on your financial situation in your family. So how much your parents earn, if you like own a place to live and all of it. Merit based means that it is based on your grades, on your achievements and all of it. Some colleges in America are merit based, some are like need based, some are both. It just very depends. And Minerva is need based. So it basically means that every single financial aid package will be different. There is not like, you know, just two different types of if you can get like type A or type B and you just get either one or the second one. Um, and that's also why I decided to not share any of my numbers that I got. I would just talk generally about things. First, my family's privacy. Second, I just feel like some people could feel disappointed that they got less aid or the other way around. They could get so much more aid than I got. So, it, you know, it just very depends on your personal situation. So, what is in the financial aid package? The first thing is a scholarship. So a scholarship is money that you, need, you don't need to pay back. Yeah, it is just to cover your expenses. Um, you know, it is just to cover your tuition. Yeah, it is a scholarship. Then we have a student loan. The student loan is money that you need to pay back after college. And this is a very popular solution in the United States. Um, so you will have a student loan. I also do have a student loan that you need to pay back after Minerva. Fortunately, in my case, this is not that much so I hope that I'll be able to do it very quickly after college and not to struggle with it for years and the third thing is the work study so, so as I said on the type of visa in the United States so on the F1 visa you can work eight hours per week and Minerva pays you for that job as you know as just working normally and then you can use this money to like pay for your food pay for your other expenses your clothes and as part of your financial aid package it is the money that your family needs to pay. So basically the cost that your family needs to cover each year. Then obviously we have the flights, we have the visas, we have the health insurance, as I mentioned before, we have a cost of a good laptop. You will probably need a good laptop for Minerva. And yeah, I think this is about it. 
So the classical like year on Minerva costs forty thousand dollars. But again, this is before all of the financial aid that I just mentioned. And yeah, it is a lot. I'm aware that I will still have a student loan and I'm aware that it is very expensive. But honestly, my financial aid package is good for me. And I don't want to tell you that, you know, everyone will be able to afford Minerva because again, it is very expensive. But in my honest opinion, it is more affordable than other American colleges. It is more affordable than Ivy League colleges. Okay, on Ivy, you can sometimes get a full ride, but I feel like this is kind of like a rare event. On Minerva, you will never get a full ride. I, I never heard about anyone getting a full ride. Uh, you can get scholarships from like external things. So from external organizations, you can get more scholarship towards your cost of Minerva. Uh, I actually forgot to add two very important things to the finances part. First, your financial aid package changes every year. So every year you need to submit new documents and get a new scholarship and get a new student loan and all of it. And this is both good and bad. The good part about it is that if something in your family happens, some, uh, I don't know, someone will lose their job or something like that, next year you will get better financial aid like Minerva will see all of the new documents, new data and you will able to get more money basically. The bad thing about it is that I don't really know what my financial aid will be the next year. So it is a little bit harder to prepare for it. So it is an interesting solution. I think it both has pros and cons, but uh, I just feel like I should inform you about it. And the second part that I wanted to add is consider that living in some of the Minerva countries can be very expensive, but some countries are very cheap. So what I mean by that, in all of the countries, you earn the exact same amount for your work study. So it will be always the same money uh, if you do obviously the same job for the same amount of hours because that can also change year from year. Uh, but in some countries, I don't know, this $100, for example, will buy you a lot of food. And then in some countries, it will buy you like just a couple of meals. So again, you should also consider that like South Korea, for example, will be one of the very expensive ones. But then uh, Argentina, Buenos Aires, tends to be usually a lot cheaper for students. Uh, so again, this is not a traditional university. The costs will change a lot year to year, depending in what country, what semester you're in. So yeah, okay, I think this is it about the finances. I'm just looking at my script. Everything is done, so let's move on to the Q&A. And I have about 20 questions. I probably won't answer all of them, but I will do my best. Let's go with the first one. Why is not Minerva in many rankings? Again, because it is very untraditional. It doesn't have like traditional college facilities. It's still a very good college. It actually won the award for the most innovative college in the world. Um, right here, I will just post it on the screen. Uh, actually, it won it twice in a row, which is kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, but it is not in a lot of like very popular rankings again just because of how untraditional the curriculum is it would be just hard to compare it to like other schools okay <laughs> this is a question that i get a lot is flex connected to minerva so i did the future leaders exchange program and i'm still very much associated with flex um i'm a city representative for flex still i go to different events and talk about flex and all of it but no, Flex is not connected to Minerva. And a lot of people think it is because this is true. A lot of people who graduated from Flex go to Minerva as their college. But I honestly think it is because we are very open to travel. We have some kind of proficiency in English, you know, really, really want to experience new cultures. We also went to the United States before, so it is a little bit easier for us. And that's why I think a lot of flexors apply to Minerva. There is no direct connection. It's not like Flex just sends us some like documents and they're like, okay, do you want this spot on this crazy new university? Uh, no, this is unfortunately not how it works. Not a direct connection, but being a flexor just makes you more active in your community. Just you are kind of like a natural leader. You know, you do a lot of things and that helps you to get into Minerva, but that would also help you to get to any other college. In some quick questions, what city are you the most excited about? Um, I don't know, this is hard to say, probably Seoul, South Korea for now, and maybe Buenos Aires, Argentina, and obviously my script is gone. Okay, uh, what your parents think about Minerva, they're super supportive, they were from the beginning, uh, they really, I think, 
truly believe that this is a great place for me, especially my dad who helped me with the application process with all of the financial aid documents. Thank you again so much, dad. Uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, I'm very grateful to say that my parents support my decision. I know this is not always the case for everyone. Okay. Um, can you go to a normal college after Minerva? Yes, you can go to a typical normal college after Minerva to complete your master program. You can go to a traditional college. It is the degree that you get on Minerva is very valid. Like you don't need to do anything additional. It is just a normal bachelor's degree. Okay. Are you scared of being homesick, not dealing with everything? I'm not that scared of being homesick. I know it will be very hard on me to like, you know, leave again, leave all of my friends, my family, my boyfriend in Poland, but I know that it will be good for me. Obviously, I get very anxious sometimes, like um, I'm definitely scared, but I don't think I'm really afraid of being homesick. Okay, let's go to the next one. Will you stay in the United States after college? Honestly, I have no idea what I will do for now. Uh, we'll see how it goes. It okay. Uh, do you need to learn the language of those other countries? No, you don't need to learn the language, but you are encouraged to do so. You don't need to learn all of these very hard languages, but it is definitely helpful to learn them, at least a little bit. Like, it helps you to immerse in the community, but also just, like, find where you should be using public transport and just, like, Google Maps and, like, find the restaurant that you're looking for. Uh, so, yeah, especially the countries that have a different alphabet, I think it would be very helpful to learn them. I'm definitely planning to do so. Okay. Why do we need a prep year? Okay. okay, so in my opinion, the prep year is mostly because we all come from different countries. So we all graduated from different high schools, different education systems, and like we basically have different levels of math, of English, I don't know, we know different facts about the world. And the preparation year is to kind of like teach all of us how to work together, um, how to think critically, how to do proper research, how to write good essays. And I actually think this is a great idea. Uh, so yeah, I think this is why we have a prep year. And again, we'll talk about this in a year, okay? Uh, okay, next question. When you can go home, can you go home during summer? Yes, during the summer break, I'll probably fly back to Poland. I will just stay with my family, probably also work here. Uh, so yeah, this is my plan for summer right now. You can obviously go home. Okay. Oh, this is a nice question. Why Minerva is called Minerva? So Minerva was the Roman goddess of wisdom, of knowledge. And yeah, this is kind of like related to mythology. There is some symbolism behind it. I actually quite like the name Minerva. I think it is unique. Uh, also, the Minerva slogan is so like simple and clean. I wish it had a little bit more colors. We I don't really think we have like colors of our college but i like how like clean it is and simple okay and the last question what are you the most excited for i think people the community like i already met so many people that i'll go uh, to minerva with and they're truly so intelligent like so passionate about things and that also what shows me that minerva is truly a good school like everyone is so so passionate about things they really want to like succeed in life they they're passionate about different social issues like they're not like literally i don't think we have like a single lazy per person i mean all of us are lazy <laughs> in a sense but what i'm trying to say is that those people really know why they're going to minerva like you can see that they have some kind of passion that they really want to succeed a lot of them are going into computer science or business they really want to have their own companies so yeah, uh, I think I'm mostly excited about the people and the inspiration that I will get from them. And I still do have a lot, I have a lot of other questions, but I honestly do not really want to make this video an hour long. So if you have any more questions, you can ask me below this video or I will also do a Q&A on my Instagram. And yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you liked this video. Uh, if you did, you can always write a comment or again, go to my Instagram right here. And yeah, take care of yourself, drink a lot of water and see you next time. I think the next video will be about the summer prep and how I'm preparing to go to Minerva and why I need to study during summer. Okay, so bye, 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 bye.